Hello, friends. Are we recording? We are live. Good to go. All right. We're not live. We're recorded. We're pre-recorded here. Earth, fire, water, air is our book of the week this week for third year. And can I set up talk to the group? Would you like to? Yeah. Sure. They are beautiful pictures. Yes. Yeah, great idea. Even this. Show the um, inside cover. It's so beautiful. Yes, yeah, right there. So pretty. Well, it's double. So. I believe there are four chapters, so I'm going to do four videos. It's quite long. But it's quite beautiful. All right. Earth, Fire, Water, Air by Mary Hoffman. Illustrated by Jane Ray. It's made in New York. Earth. I'm going to skip the intro. So we're going to go to Earth, and there's a symbol of the bowl. Also, the pages down there. Oh, and it's more color. Let's go to Earth. No, let's go to Earth. No, it's not just the text. With the bowl. No, it's past the intro. I'm skipping the intro. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, Earth. Mother Earth. So the next page is Mother Earth. Earth is the first and most important element. The Greeks and Romans named her planet after it. In the Middle Ages, it was considered the element of the four. It is easy to see why many people thought of Earth as their first mother, the source of all life. The Greeks called her Gaia. She was Prithivi to the Hindus and Ishtar to the Babylonians. People all over the world, from North America to Japan, Scandinavia to New Zealand, believed in an earth mother goddess and a sky father. In ancient Egypt, it was the other way around. Geb was the earth god and Nut the sky goddess. Women who wanted babies and women who were about to give birth pressed themselves close to the ground to share in her fruitfulness. Until quite recently, in one part of Italy, newborn babies were placed on the earth as soon as they had been bathed and dressed. It was a way of saying that all life comes from the earth, our mother. All the food that people eat either grows from the soil or comes from animals, which themselves rely on the earth to provide their food. Even the birds of the air and the fishes of the sea depend on food that comes from the earth. Gradually, though, we seem to have forgotten that the earth is the mother of us all. Life in the dark. Go ahead. The earth is a generous mother. Her warm embrace gives shelter to many kinds of animals. Some of the most humble are the most important, like the common earthworm. Earth passes through its body as it wriggles through the ground, breaking up the soil as it goes, making it crumbly and diggable. Bigger animals make tunnels under the earth, forming intricate patterns like the warrens of rabbits or the underground labyrinths of meerkats, moles, and badgers. These are the places where they sleep, give birth, and hide from predators. Diggers and delvers. But it is not just animals that burrow and tunnel into the earth. In the Ice Age, people lived in underground caves. Caves have been found in France, painted with the images of bison and antelope and all the other animals that Ice Age people hunted for food. These painted caves were magical places where young boys were brought when they came of age to be hunters. Thousands of years later, people found out that the Earth Mother had many treasures hidden inside her, gold, silver, diamonds, and coal that could only be seized from her by those who would go down into the dark. She takes many lives in return for the riches people dig out of her. <sighs> Creatures of the earth. Here's the bull. I like the bull. He's my, he's my astrological symbol. The earth has her own creatures, special to her, the earthbound ones who cannot fly or swim. Above all others, the bull symbolizes the strength and solidity of the earth and carries its own magic. Even today, conjurers still use the word abracadabra 
which comes from an ancient phrase meaning the bull, the only bull, when they want to create a magical illusion. Hmm. Buffalo Dark. Sorry, here's a poem. <laughs> the buffaloes are gone, and those who saw the buffaloes are gone. Those who saw the buffaloes by thousands and how they pawed the prairie sod into dust with their hoofs, their great heads down, paving, pawing on in a great pageant of dusk, those who saw the buffaloes are gone. And the buffaloes are gone by Carl Sandburg. Earth's animals, the large meat eaters and the animals they feed on, the hoofed and the horns need a lot of room. But the open spaces are shrinking and the animals are disappearing too. Oh no. Here are some mythical beasts. As if the earth did not give rise to enough wonderful creatures naturally, myth and legend have given us even more miraculous beasts. The unicorn might be an elegant interpretation of the rhinoceros, or it might be the result of the belief that everything on land had its counterpart in the sea. When spiraled narwhal horns were washed up on beaches, people of the Middle Ages deduced there must be a single horned animal on the earth too. The centaur was a creature of Greek myth. A man from the waist up fused with the body of a horse it was probably the result of people seeing men riding horses for the first time. The sphinx was made up of parts of other animals. The Greek sphinx has a woman's head and breast, a lion's body, an eagle's wing, and a serpent's tail. The Egyptian sphinx has a lion's body and a man's head. The chimera was an incredible mixture of lion, dragon, and she-goat. According to myth, it terrorized the people of Lycia in Asia Minor until it was killed by Bellerophon. Next page is Earthquakes. The Earth is not always a gentle and loving mother. Sometimes she can be terrifying and destructive. Suddenly, without warning, the ground begins to shake and rumble and the Earth splits open, swallowing anything in the way. Some earthquakes strike in remote, uninhabited places. They can even happen under the sea. But others attack crowded cities like Los Angeles and Tokyo. It is becoming possible to predict earthquakes and to make buildings earthquake-proof. But even in earlier times, sorry, when there was no chance of avoiding or predicting earthquakes, people would always come back and build again in the same spot. Dragon's teeth. The one thing that the earth cannot produce is living creatures, though many legends say she can. One of them tells of the Greek hero Cadmus, who made men spring out of the earth. When he arrived in the land where he was to build the city of Thebes, he was thirsty. He tried to drink water from a spring, not realizing it was sacred to the war god Ares, who had put a huge dragon to guard it. Cadmus killed the dragon so that he could drink, and Ares never forgave him. Get yeah, on dragon's teeth. Then the goddess Athena, who had been watching, told Cadmus to take the teeth of the dragon and plant them in the earth like seeds. When he obeyed her, a host of armed warriors immediately sprang up. Too many for Cadmus to command. He threw a stone among them, and they quarreled over who had done it, killing one another until there were only five of them left. These five followed Cadmus for the rest of his life. I don't, I'm not even familiar with that story. It's so odd. I know. And the picture is kind of creepy. Like, is it a good thing that they followed him, or is it a bad thing? <laughs> but hey, so you know how um, on the last page and there it um, this page yeah talking about things okay um so this is a project okay <laughs> um so uh at school my friend sophie and i um oh my gosh oh that's <laughs> what you guys did yes 
it's a it's a whale's body and a oh. a pelican's head and then a pelican's body and a whale's head. Yes, this this awesome. one's cuter. Awesome. Okay. Cycle of the seasons. Do, do we read Earth? Oh, did I miss one? Yes. Earth to Earth. Perhaps because of a belief that the Earth could give life to anything. Oops, me, sorry. Hmm. People in many cultures have buried their dead since prehistoric times. If Mother Earth could bring back flowers and crops and trees after the dead period of winter, perhaps she could bring back her human children to life too. The Christian burial service still says, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, ensure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. The Celts piled the earth into high burial mounds on top of their kings and warriors. The Celts are from Ireland. You know where that is on the map. The ancient Egyptians carried the idea of burial mounds even further. They constructed huge pyramids for their kings, the pharaohs, and buried them in chambers deep inside. Because they saw death as a journey to the afterlife, they buried all the pharaoh's favorite possessions with him, along with food and wine to keep him going on his way in the afterlife. The cycle of the seasons. Life comes back out of the earth every spring. Many myths and legends around the world arose from attempts to explain this annual miracle. The Greek goddess of corn, Demeter, was the granddaughter of great mother earth herself. Demeter had a daughter named Persephone, whose father was Zeus, the king of the gods. Persephone was stolen by Hades, the god of the underworld, to be his wife. Demeter made Zeus get her daughter back for her, but because Persephone had eaten six pomegranate seeds when she was in the underworld, she was allowed to live on earth only for six months of the year. During the other six months, she had to go back and be queen to Hades. Her mother missed her so much that the leaves fell off the trees and the earth was as bleak and miserable as Demeter felt. And that is one explanation of the season. Because most trees seem to die in the winter and come back to life in the spring, they have always seemed magical symbols of everlasting life. Trees, eternal attempts by the earth to speak to the listening sky. Rabindranath Tagore. Many trees live for hundreds of years, much longer than people. Because a tree has its roots in the earth, but reaches high up into the sky with its branches, it is also a symbol of striving for higher and better things. To the Celts, the oak tree was sacred. For Indians, it was the fig tree. In the lands where the Vikings came from, people believed that the whole world was supported by a great ash tree. Its name was, how do I say this? Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil. At the bottom, coiled around its roots, lay a dragon, the Nidhogg. At the top was an eagle. In between them scurried the squirrel, Ratatosk, carrying their insults back and forth. Yggdrasil's roots went down into Nilheim and up okay. into Asgard, Asgard, where the gods lived. The ash tree was believed to have been there forever and would never die. The tree that would not die. The tree that would not die. One more page. Oh, did you show the tree? Yeah. I would show the, pa the page twice for some reason. Okay. Dragon, squirrel, eagle. Ah, uh, eagle. Okay. Saving the earth. If the earth is our mother, we have treated her very badly. We have moved a long way from the native North American who refused even to dig in the earth, saying that it would mean wounding his mother. Now, many parts of the world that were once full of trees have become deserts where nothing grows and nothing can live. Large areas of rainforest in the Amazon, Madagascar, Rwanda, and other places have been burned or cut down. Often, people need land for farming and cannot afford to proceed more slowly or to think about the future. <clears throat> they need food for their families now. 
Around the world, so much is being lost, wildlife in its habitats, traditional ways of life, that it seems time is running out for many of the treasures of the earth unless countries can work together to preserve them. But the solutions to big problems often begin with something small. In India, the Chipko movement began when women in a village put their arms around the trees that were about to be cut down to make way for a factory. <clears throat> they told the woodcutters they would have to saw through them too. The women had seen how cutting down lots of trees led to floods, which washed away roads and bridges. Now the Chipko, which means hug the tree movement, has spread all over India. It is a case of ordinary people making a real change in what is happening to the earth. You can show that picture. The, the yeah. Indian women at the bottom are hugging the trees. And I'm going to stop there for today. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed that chapter on earth, and we'll be back tomorrow with fire. Okay, bye. Hasta luego. Bye. Bye.